Hi, welcome to this Instructional Design and Technology Desk Training from Wichita State University. My name is Dr. Carolyn Schmidt. Today's training is on branding. Our agenda is pretty straightforward. What is a brand? Why should you brand? What are you branding? And how do you do it? So, what is a brand? It's been my observation that many people think of branding as being equal to sales. If we think of branding, we think of Coca-Cola, for example, or perhaps even Walmart. So is branding something that only goes with massive sales like Coca-Cola and Walmart? Well, it's pretty obvious that my take on that question is no. Branding, in fact, is something that's very useful in higher education. Branding is for you. So let's take a look at what it is. First and foremost, branding is a process. It's a way of thinking about what you do, who you are, and what you want people to know about you. The end result of that process is a set of easily communicated themes that distinguish you. So a brand um, sometimes is associated with a logo, but it doesn't have to be necessarily a logo or even contain a logo. It is something, in fact, that is simply easily remembered. A brand is something that is easily remembered. But keep in mind that 94% of the world's population recognizes the Coke logo, so clearly their branding has been very successful. It may sound obvious already, but let's go over why people brand. Branding differ differentiates you from other people. It makes you more memorable, and it gives your students a sense of belonging. But, you say, I'm not Coke. Why should I need to do it? It's true, you're not Coke. But all of us are in the business of helping people remember things. Branding is just a tool that will help people do that. From an educational standpoint, branding actually helps to provide a schema that aids in memory. So if you are clear with your students, um, with your brand, that will help them as they come into your course understand from the beginning what they're doing. That provides them a schema that as you give them new information, they can hang that information on. Branding also reduces surprise, and while it may seem like novelty is the way to get people's attention, novelty actually is a barrier to entry in learning. Novelty is one of the things that we need to try to decrease in our class from course to course or class to class meeting or from online course to online course, however we deliver the information. We want to reduce surprise in the way that it's delivered to improve the user experience. Branding also improves students' sense of belonging. So why brand? You're giving yourself a gift when you brand. It makes it easier for you to get your message across. And you're giving your students a gift when you brand, too. It makes learning easier for them and helps them feel like they belong. Okay, so branding might be important, but what exactly should we be branding when we think about it from a higher education perspective? Okay, well, first things first. What are you branding? There are really four ways for you to consider branding, and it's probably worth it to at least consider developing a brand in all four of these areas. The first is your personal brand. Who are you? What kind of teacher are you? What do you think that your students should learn from someone like you? Then there's, of course, your departmental brand. One of the things that we learned talking with the Alumni Association is that those students who, after they graduate, feel the most tied to the university feel tied to the university through their department, not through the university itself. It's important for your department to have a sense of self and that it gets um, communicated even in courses that are delivered online or in other ways that are not traditional face-to-face -face courses. You should also think about your field's brand. Uh, your field probably already has a brand. It probably has brand consultants and people who are working on this professionally. But what do you want to make sure that your students understand about your field? 
Um, what kinds of ways can you brand your field for your students? And then, of course, there's the university brand. At Wichita State, the university has a very clear brand and visual standards and other things that are useful to support it. At other colleges, um, there are, I'm certain, other um, offices that will help you understand your university or your college brand. So let's start with the one that sounds the most kind of yucky, and that's the personal brand. And I know that sounds yucky. People aren't products. Of course they're not products. But at the same time, teachers differ one to the next. When I was in the face-to-face -face classroom on a daily basis, I was a particular kind of teacher. I liked the Socratic method, so I used a lot of question and answer style lecturing. I didn't lecture in a I'm going to speak now and you're going to write down what I say manner because that wasn't my style. But I had friends who did that. I had friends who were excellent, brilliant lecturers who would talk, walk in the room at the beginning of class talking, talk the entire time, and basically walk out at the end still talking, and they were brilliant professors. They were particular kinds of professors. Each of us is different. So thinking about your teaching style and how that reflects you and what you want to teach, that's something that's some worth communicating to your students. Also, your preferences. Do you prefer to um, talk about things theoretically, or do you like to do things that are more applied? Do you work particularly well with students who are first generation students, or do you like to unlock the quiet people in the back of the room? What are your preferences as a teaching style? Also, the social you. Are you a professor who is most comfortable dealing with students on a um, one-on-one -on -one basis outside of class and you just go to class to do lectures but for the most part you you interact with your students outside of class or do you prefer only to interact with your students inside of class these are all things that are really worth communicating to your students and they should be and could easily be part of your personal brand your personal brand communicates who you are to your students and to the university it's very valuable What about your department's brand? Does your department already have a brand? Do you take that for granted in face-to-face -face classes, but perhaps forget about it elsewhere? Um, is that brand your the the brand that your department wants? Can you fit what people know about your department into what you want them to understand about your department? For example, say you're in a department that is known for having particularly challenging, difficult classes. How do you change the idea that your classes are hard and fit that into the idea that they are challenging or that they are useful? These are kinds of things that it's worth thinking through. Um, sometimes, of course, a department already has a very clear idea what its departmental brand is, and you have to fit what you're doing into that departmental brand. But many departments, um, at least on our campus in Wichita, in Wichita um, don't yet have clear departmental brands, and there's room for you to define your department for them, so long as that's something that you do in consultation with everybody else in your department. Then there's the brand that comes with the field that you represent academically. Your field may already have a brand. Probably it does. Like I said, it's probably a brand that has been professionally developed. But is it a good brand? Um, is it one that you want your students to know? If available, you can reinforce your field's brand by providing online links or other ways that you could provide um, links to online content to important associations and journals in your field. This is something you should consider doing for undergraduate classes as well as graduate classes because it gives your students a sense of the larger academic field. Also, of course, providing employment information with, um, within your field or um, for people who have degrees in your area but don't necessarily um, go forward in your field. Also, you can search for free images. Frequently, um, there are you, the associations associated with any particular academic field have free images available, and they're easy to locate by Googling 
for our images in your field and then so sorting by image and then looking for ones that are licensed to reuse. If you don't know how to do that, we can show you how to do that in two minutes if you contact Instructional Design and Technology and we'd be happy to show you how to do that. Then of course there's the university and college brand. Here at Wichita State we have a very clear university brand. I am doing this presentation right now using a um, university um, sanctioned PowerPoint. It's a brand new one and it was provided as a template on our strategic communications website. But even if you don't teach for Wichita State, um, your college or university almost certainly has um, a very clear brand that it is attempting to communicate to its students. You can figure out a lot about the college or university brand first and foremost by looking at the students. They dress the part. I was working with a face-to-face -face professor last semester and I said um, he was putting a course online and I said that it was important for his course to look like a Wichita State course. This professor told me at the time you know I don't think my students even my face-to-face -face students really identify um, as being shockers necessarily on campus they just come to class they do class and then they leave and that's just not the kind of student we have so I asked to come to his class this is something that we do in instructional design and technology we like to come to the classes of people um, that we're putting we're working with to put their courses online so that we can help get a sense of who they are and get that online so I went to his class and this was just an ordinary day. It wasn't a game day. It wasn't even a time when the season, any particular season, was um, hot. Um, so th there was no particular reason why students would, in his class, be dressed in shocker gear. But over 20% of his students had shocker gear on that was visible just sitting at their desks. So I'm not talking about. Um, a shocker backpack or a jacket that I wouldn't see on them or socks or something like that but simply visible from mid chest up I could see over 20 percent of his students had shocker gear on so students are self-defining they are being um, they, they do want to be part of, of something that's larger than themselves and giving your your class a sense of being part of the college will help to tap into that larger college and university brand. So okay, you've stuck with me this far. Now it's time to think about how that we go about actually branding. First and foremost we have to start with the thinking part. What are you going to brand? And how does this brand fit into the whole? then you need to start researching research 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 learn everything you can about the thing that you're branding if you're branding yourself ask your friends and your co-workers about you how do they see you what do they see as your strengths what would they say if they were going to try to um, distill down who you were in just a few words what would they use to describe you learn how other schools approach your content or your field Think about how the content of your class, whether it's biology or math or physics or French, how do other schools approach the class and how can we fit the idea of, of branding your content into that larger story while still maintaining what is different about you. Also, of course, how is the field being portrayed elsewhere? Talk to your department. Um, your department may well be working on a departmental brand. There may be other people in your department who maybe shouldn't be necessarily um, approached with the word branding right from the very beginning, but would be open to talking to you about how the department is viewed on campus and what those positive things are that the department adds to the campus. That can be very useful information. And finally, of course, investigate the school's resources. So then, once you have thought through everything and you've researched as well as you can, think about how are you different. Focus on what makes you different, not what makes you the same. What are your values? What are the benefits of taking a class with you or the benefits of taking a class in your field? 
and then explain how you fit in. So you're looking at the whole story and trying to figure out the whole story, and then you're thinking about you, yourself, as being both part of the whole story and also distinct. You want to be able to focus on those things that make you different, um, but at the same time fit into the larger picture.